What is up guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're going to be going over Walkie's new X3 Max, which is a class 3 e-bike. But what's different about this one is it goes well over 30 miles an hour and it's all wheel drive. Assembling this thing was very quick and easy. I was able to do it in about half an hour, including filming, but I'm going to slim that down to three minutes for you and give you a full breakdown starting in three, two, one. This bike comes with a three amp charger, foldable pedals, all the tools required to assemble it, and a very detailed user manual. The first thing we're going to do is install the handlebar. Remove the bolt and cap on top of the stem. Remove the necessary amount of spacers to get the handlebar height just right for your liking. Then reinstall the cap and bolt on top of the stem. Once you have the handlebar aligned to the fork, you can fully torque down the bolts on the sides of the stem. Flip the bike upside down and remove the front axle. Next, we're gonna install the pedals. Keep in mind that the left side pedal is reverse thread. So to tighten it, you have to torque it counterclockwise. Before you install the front wheel, remove the plastic guard inside the brake caliper. Make sure to install the black inserts the manufacturer calls anti-torque washers into the dropouts then add a washer and lock nut on each side. Remove the brace on the anti-torque washer to tuck the hub motor wiring under it. Connect the wiring to the matching connector on the fork then reinstall the brakes. Next, we're installing the headlight and the front fender at the same time, since they're both mounted with the same bolt through the fork brace. Connect the headlamp connector and secure the wiring with some zip ties provided. The brace for the fender bolts onto both sides of the fork. Make sure to use the same bolt on the left side to secure the motor wiring harness. Rotate the display to your desired precision and torque down the Allen bolts on the bottom side to secure it in place. Before your first ride, make sure the battery is fully charged. The red light on the charger will turn green when it's ready. The recommended tire pressure is 23 to 25 PSI. Just want to quickly go over the features of this bike, starting with the brakes. This thing comes with some huge 203 millimeter disc brakes. Look how thick those are. This is not like a standard mountain bike brake. And it's also paired with some four piston hydraulic calipers, which is a lot more braking power than you'll see on any class three e-bike in this price range. This bike retails for less than $2,000 and it comes with so much power. Like this is a thousand watt front hub motor. The rear is also a thousand watt hub motor. It's got a Shimano Altus rear derailleur paired with a Shimano seven speed shifter. It's got this nice display where you can change the power assist levels and you can switch from rear wheel drive to front wheel drive to all wheel drive. Comes with this huge LED front headlamp. This bike has full suspension, which is hydraulic. This is what they use for the rear shock. You could also lock the front fork if you wanted to. The wheel set is 26 by four, which makes this a fat tire e-bike. Comes with a cargo rack with a 55 pound load capacity. Fully functional brake light. I like that it says the brand as well. I think it looks pretty slick. It's got some fenders front and rear to keep you from getting muddy when you're riding on some wet trails. But I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep those on. I might take those off because I think it, it will simply just look a lot better without it. This bike is powered by a 48 volt 20 amp hour battery, which is also removable. To take the battery out, you just unlatch this, fold the frame and pull the battery out. It's pretty simple though. It's such a huge bike. I'm not really sure why we're gonna make this foldable. It's very hard to fit in a standard sedan. I had a hard time fitting this in a Subaru Crosstrek. 
But enough talking, let's go take this thing out and see how fast this thing goes. So without pedaling, we managed to hit 34 miles an hour as the top speed, but it seemed to be pretty consistent between 32 and 33. The speedometer on the display is actually pretty accurate. This is just how it came out of the box without calibration. Now I'm going to try it with pedaling and see what kind of top speed we get. All right, now let's see what the top speed is with some pedaling. That is pretty impressive. So pedaling doesn't even change too much. I noticed it's starting to ghost pedal past 32 miles an hour. So I was on the top gear, gear seven, and I noticed when I was passing around 32, 33 miles an hour, only then would I start to feel some ghost pedaling. That's actually one of the things that I really dislike about most uh, pedal powered, like class two, class three e-bikes is once you go past 20 to 25 miles an hour, you'll notice you're gonna be doing a lot of ghost pedaling but this bike seems to be appropriately geared for these speeds. So I really like that about this. So I would say without pedaling, maximum speed is 33 miles an hour, but with pedaling, it seems to be about 35 miles an hour. So this bike is all wheel drive. So if you press this information button, you just hold it down for two seconds. You'll notice that it'll switch from rear wheel drive. You can switch to front wheel drive. If you just want your front wheel to spin, or you can switch to all wheel drive. You can leave it in rear wheel drive on mode one if you wanna absolutely maximize the range on the battery, but I'm enjoying riding it on mode five on all wheel drive, so we're gonna keep it at that. I don't know if it's just the really wide handlebars and long wheelbase, but this bike feels really stable, even at full speed. I'm just carrying it through high speed turns. I know when I'm riding my little razors or my smaller bikes, it feels really twitchy once uh, you're hitting a bump or making a turn at higher speed. One of the first things you notice right away hopping on this bike is how tall it is. This is probably ideal for a five foot eight to six foot rider. I am barely five foot eight and it feels pretty big for me, but my wife is actually taller than me and she freaking loves this thing. She said it was pretty comfortable after riding like maybe 25, 26 miles while we were in Chincoteague last week. So if you're like five foot four, you might have trouble riding this as a daily commuter. Okay, I gotta say, the pedal assist is pretty dang aggressive. And the suspension's actually pretty comfortable, like you can do light trails. 
all day. I can probably do some mountain biking with this, though. Of course, it is still an e-bike, so it is on the heavier side. This headlight's actually pretty damn bright. Now you might notice in this video of me riding this dark trail that there seems to be some sort of weird pattern blocking the beam of the headlight from properly lighting up the trail. And that's simply due to this protector that they added on top of the headlight. So I'm gonna quickly take this off and see if it improves the lighting. Man, I wish that center part was removable. There we go. As you can see, it is clearly much brighter and much cleaner projection of light since there is no longer anything blocking the lens. Now, if you wanted to access the advanced settings to make further adjustments to the pedal assist levels and other functions, you can hold down this plus and minus button on the left side for two seconds. And here you can toggle between display setting, advanced setting, information, and exit using the plus and minus button as up and down. And then to make a selection, you press the information button. Here in advanced settings, you can adjust how many different assist levels you wanna have. From factory, it comes with five different ones. Or you can even change it as much as nine different ones, which seems kind of ridiculous to me. Like you don't really need much more than five. And you can fine tune how much assist you want on each different level. Current limit refers to the maximum amp output of the factory controller. It's already set at 30. If you want less torque, you can turn it down to 20 or 15, but I'm gonna keep mine at 30. I'm enjoying it at its maximum power level. Here you can also adjust how sensitive and how powerful you want the pedal assist to be. Reset to defaults, restores everything back to factory settings. Adding a password here would require you to put a passcode in every time you turn on the bike if you want that extra level of security. And here in the display settings is where you can make changes like if you wanna show the speedometer in kilometers per hour instead, you can change the toggle unit from imperial to metric. Wheel refers to the overall diameter size of the current wheel set installed on there. I'm not gonna change this since the speedometer reads pretty accurately. Now speed limit, I have it currently set to 62 miles an hour. Obviously it doesn't go that fast, but this just keeps the controller from restricting the speed. If you wanted to limit your bike to, let's say 20 miles an hour for any reason, you can change that here, but we're gonna leave that at 62. Now as far as set voltage, you wanna leave this alone at 48 volts if you're still using the factory 48 volt 20 amp hour battery. Otherwise the battery life percentage display might be inaccurate. Now dormancy refers to like a sleep mode. So I have it set at five minutes. So if I don't touch this bike for five minutes, it'll just automatically shut off so it doesn't drain your battery. I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate how to fold the bike and pull the battery out. You're gonna take the key and switch it in the off position and then you push it in and go further counterclockwise. Pull it out. Unlatch the hinge. Kickstand up. When you fold the front half of the bike back, you'll now have access to the battery. Now you can simply just pull it out. Now this is a UL certified 48 volt 20 amp hour lithium battery utilizing Samsung cells. It has a capacity of 960 watt hours. Now Walkie doesn't have a advertised range for this X3 Max dual motor bike just yet, but just to give you an idea of the real world range, my wife Bailey rode this bike for over 25 miles last weekend and she was only able to drain the battery life down to 50%. And as you can see in this video, for a long part of it, she was not pedaling at all, but she kept it in real wheel drive on pedal assist level three. But when I ride it, I keep it on the maximum power level in all wheel drive, and I was able to drain the battery life down to 76% after just riding it for a little over five miles. So it really depends on how you ride. If you're like me and you barely pedal and you like to keep it at maximum power level, cruising over 30 miles an hour, you're realistically gonna get about 20 to 25 miles of range. But if you're someone who just likes to cruise around like my wife and keep it on level three 
pedal occasionally, you might be able to get over 50 miles out of this. I honestly think this is as much power and as much legal e-bike as you can get for less than $2,000. If you wanna check out more information on Walkie's new X3 Max, I will have a link for their website in the description below. But if you found today's video helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, wanna keep up with some of my projects or some of my e-bike scooter reviews, consider subscribing to my channel. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.